friends. Now, you've probably heard of ghosting. Maybe you've even been ghosted yourself. It's very common, and the indifference of it all can just be very hard to get over. So Carlin is here with some coping strategies. And Carlin, maybe we can just start by explaining to our viewers what ghosting is. Yes, absolutely, T. Uh, ghosting, for those of you who haven't experienced it, it's the practice of ceasing all communication. You know, having someone that you believe that you care about you, whether it's a friend, whether it's a professional acquaintance at work, or someone that you're dating, disappear from your life completely without any explanation at all. No phone call, no email, not even a text, Tracy. Like Casper the ghost, they are gone. And your attempts to connect with that person it's like zero silence on the other end. You know, I'm laughing, but it's devastating. I'm, it's devastating. The folks that I know who have been in, say, romantic relationships and thought things were progressing normally and then all of a sudden didn't hear from the person at all, like thought maybe they got in a car accident. Like, how could this person just disappear off the face of the earth? It's brutal. So, Carr, why do people do that? Why do people ghost other people? What's the point of this? Uh, there are so many different factors and reasons that that might happen. Uh, for the person who is ghosting the individual, either they're avoiding their own emotional discomfort and they aren't thinking about how the actions or, or the impact of the actions on the other person. Um, sometimes it's a lack of confidence in, in handling unfamiliar and unpleasant emotion. Uh, what the research shows at the root of ghosting is someone's inability to have those confrontational conversations or, or, to, or to have difficult conversations or emotions, whether it's shame, fear, helplessness. And sometimes, Trace, honestly, it's downright, it's, a, it's very cowardly. Mm. It's actually a form of, 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 of cowardice. It's the refusal to acknowledge one's own misconduct. And the more it happens, either to the person or their friends, the more people become desensitized to it and the more likely they're to do it to someone else. So all in all, it could be a number one of those things or a combination of all of it and then some. Yeah, it sounds like um, there's a bit of emotional immaturity happening as well. Listen, I'm not very confrontational and I do run away from uncomfortable conversations. I don't like them. But <laughs> part of getting older is realizing that you have to have them like you can't just you can't just run away. It doesn't work like that in the workplace. It doesn't work like that in romantic relationships. You have to kind of get through them. So I want to talk about the ramifications yeah. uh, on the person getting ghosted, because as I mentioned, it's not a good feeling uh, and it can be quite devastating. And as you said, Tracy, you know, you don't like confrontations or having difficult conversations. A lot of us don't, but we are better because of it. Mm -hmm. And while ghosting does not affect everyone the same way, but for many people, ghosting can actually have a huge impact on one's self-esteem and how we view ourselves. So it, it can bring up feelings of this feeling disrespected, feeling used, feeling disposable. It, for, and for some folks, it actually have them questioning uh, why they are here and, and is it their fault that they are being ghosted? So social rejection activates the same pain pathways in the brain as physical pain. And ghosting also creates a sense of emotional dysregulation where you feel like you're out of control. Um, and in the dating world, world especially it's very cruel because you're putting yourself out there you're being vulnerable you're looking for love and it's particularly painful when you're left with no rationale no guidelines for how to proceed and then you're sitting with this heap of emotions of, of, of shame of, of helplessness and fear to sort through on your own when you did not create those emotions on your own give us some tips on how to cope with being ghosted car the important thing to remember is that when someone ghosts you, it says nothing about you. So try not to take it personally. It's really more about the person who's ghosting you. Give your ghosting story some air. You know, vulnerability expert Brené Brown reminds us that shame thrives in silence and secrecy. So share your story with someone you trust. When you stay silent around your ghosting story or hide in the story, it may lead you to a, you know, that hamster wheel of, of, of self-blame and shame and, and bring on feelings of fondy and fondy, fear of not doing enough or fear of not being enough. And the other thing ghosting gives us an opportunity to do, Trace, is to own your 
narrative and relationship standards. While you didn't play an active role in how you were ghosted, you get to decide how the story ends and you get to decide how you will write the ending of that script. Are you the victim? Are you the blamer? Are you the hero? The other thing is, Trace, which I'm a huge, huge advocate for, is seek professional help if you need more tools to deal with the trauma of ghosting. And of course, trust yourself and focus on your healing. Focus on finding new ways to find closure. Um, your healing is independent on an apology. Uh, so focus on finding things and people who bring you joy, friends who love and appreciate you for who you are. And for the ghosters out there, stop ghosting. Don't do it again. You can only increase your emotional maturity or your ghosting EQ by reducing your ghosting score. So instead of ghosting, try Casperin. Named after the fictional child phantom, it's a friendly alternative to ghosting. Instead of ignoring someone, be honest about how you feel and let them down gently before disappearing from their lives. Let's just be kinder to each other. Be a more decent human being. Oh, I like that advice. Let's not let this trend keep trending. Like, let's be kind. Let's do, like, the bare minimum when it comes to being a human being, which is getting back to people. Thank you, Carr. Great <laughs> advice.